Hello, and I uh, thought I'd give an update from Maple because I've been here for almost a month and will be leaving soon and have learned and grown quite a bit. I did a two-week retreat, a silent retreat, meditative retreat, eight hours of meditation for two weeks. It was quite wild. And I've got a certain amount of clarity about what I want to do next and what project I'm going to undertake. And so I'm going to articulate a little bit of that and explain the bare bones pieces of it and share what would be useful for anybody that has a similar interest or would like to talk about it and what my plans are tentatively for the near future next couple of months so i had a few ideas over the last year and i've scrapped most of them or revised them or just noticed so many pitfalls and red flags as to be unconducive so this is basically the most bare bones pieces of what i do think will work and how to do it most effectively and develop it in such a way that a year from now it becomes a profoundly useful tool in a scaled way to millions of people to provide people breadcrumbs in the right direction. And so here are the pieces of it. So if you're familiar with warm data and Nora Bateson, a lot of this is informed by that. I had started off before this retreat kind of toying with the idea of like a hundred question questionnaire that a person would take to accurately gauge how they currently see the world, their level of development, their past and important switch points in their path that have helped or hurt in their development, either in developing contemplative practice or community or other modalities. And realize, you know what, a text questionnaire probably isn't the best way of doing this. Really, if you think of spiritual teachers like Soryu or others that have gotten pretty good at giving tailored instruction to people, it's because they've honed in and talked to enough people and developed enough themselves that they can gauge where you're at and give you a breadcrumb tailor to where you are. Well, that's a process. And sure, a lot of development really ought to happen in relationship, whether with a teacher or with a community, but you don't need a teacher to tell you to tie your shoes and it's good to meditate for 10 minutes a day. So there's certainly at least a minimum threshold of confidence by which you could get instruction tailored to where you're at. And so I mentioned warm data and Nora Bateson. The process that I want to undertake, that I'm going to undertake one way or another, is develop an interview process where in the course of an hour or two, in person, me or whoever else that I work with that wants to do this, I might try to convince Soryu or some other org or some wiser than I person that's better at doing an interview to glean where someone's at. Who knows? But one way or another, develop an interview process by which in an hour or two, with questions and getting to know this person, you can get a gauge of where they're at currently for anybody that's interested in doing this, right? And let's say, I'm gonna jump a little bit. So let's say six months from now, you've done hundreds of these with people in the liminal space, effect all altruists, integral theory, I don't know, like a, a whole, you wanna get a diverse bunch. In fact, uh, one good group of people that I'd wanna look at is those that go to these Goenka Vipassana retreats, these 10 day retreats that are available to a lot of people. And I'd want to do an interview with people that do these retreats before and after the retreat to get a gauge of where they were before and then after, whether it was helpful or hurtful for them. Because sometimes it's not, it's not, it's not in their Overton window and it can be too much. So after let's say six months or a year of honing this interview process, I would in the midst of it be training an AI. You might've heard of this ChatGPT Omni that's been released recently where it is like a conversation. It has tonations, it sounds like Scarlett Johansson ends having a conversation with an AI model that's been trained to answer questions a certain way and what the do's and don'ts are. And so I would train an LLM with all of this interview data on how to do it itself, uh, where let's say it's called Edify AI and it's set up in such a way that the person can reliably know that any data gleaned is not gonna be shared with Google or Apple. It's a closed system, proprietary. I know that's a long shot, but let's say that's the case and that it will say out the gate, we do not want to set up a teacher relationship with an AI. This is a guidance counselor. To a minimum threshold of confidence, it will provide you a breadcrumb based off of thousands of interviews and trends and patterns that have emerged from that data um, to a minimum threshold of confidence. And if you're interested, you can engage with it if you want. And so it's just available. People find it organically, see if it's useful or not. and. This AI will, in an hour or two, interview you and get to know you, where you're at, your past, the developmental arc and timeline that you've been on, and parse that and cross-reference that with thousands of interviews with others 
to see if there's any patterns of emergence. But you know what? All right, you're a mid-20s liberal studies student that has something of a postmodern humanist view of the world. You haven't much contemplative practice, and you're kind of an extrovert who's a big thinker and a bit disembodied. And yada, 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 like a bunch of stuff. You know what? It might say, we've not seen enough cases of this. We can't reliably give you a breadcrumb. Come back later. Or it might say, you know what? We've seen this case of where you're at enough times that those that have been where you're at have found it most useful to either do a Vipassana retreat, or it might say there's a monastery or retreat center or Dharma house in your town that might be generally useful to you. It's basically going to try to point you to um, some kind of a teacher community of some kind, ultimately, because it doesn't want to set a precedent for a erroneous AI teacher relationship. It might say a podcast or a book or a series or a course or a seminar that has been gleaned from the thousands of interviews as being genuinely edifying to a person in their larger journey. The reason I'm so excited about this is it's just the minimal valuable product thread that to, a, again, a minimum degree could be then broadly available to millions of people. I used this analogy with Soryu recently that if you imagine a baseball diamond where home plate is say enlightenment, most of that's gonna have to happen in relationship, but most people aren't even at first base. I'm talking about basic critical thinking skills, having a contemplative practice, recognizing that you're better thought of as an emergent property of the whole, this whole I am because we are. To think of yourself as an island unto yourself is just a bad ontology. It's a bad symbiotics. I remember learning about those things. I didn't come out the womb that way. I remember specific switch points where I gleaned a contemplative practice, learned in Ubuntu, I am because we are. Learned critical thinking skills. And you, I think that it's entirely accurate that after thousands of interviews and honing and experimenting and trial testing and beta testing, that you could start to notice patterns and trends that emerge of given where a person's currently at, what would be generally useful to them. And if there's any nudging in any direction, I've often said that you don't have to know the destination to point people in the right direction. That's a hard bar. Then then you're not going to help anybody with anything unless you become Buddha or something. And so... I've learned that critical thinking skills and contemplative practice and community and certain ways of thinking about my sense of identity and self have been useful. And so basically a lot, another great thing that, that would be utilized by something like this is the Harvard study. That's the longest running human study for 80 years that followed people to see who was most fulfilled and happy later in life. And it found that those that had the strongest relationships and friendships in their life and experienced growth amidst those friendships and relationships were, had the highest rates of fulfillment. I bet you could go further into the data, though, and see those that had the contemplative practice, community, what their sense of identity was, what their relationship to the world was. Uh, and this could connect you not just with modalities, but civic organizations that are just within your wheelhouse. Culture work and content online that would be within, within your wheelhouse. Communities that you might be interested in, in checking out. And so, basically, long story short, I'm going to make this one way or another, I don't care what it takes. I, I think this needs to exist. We've got a lot of difficult, tumultuous time ahead of us. This tool can not just be used for development, but to help streamline people in the right directions if things start to get a lot more hairy. You know, uh, there's this whole narrative of the decline of game A and emergence of game B in a more decentralized, uh, break off community sort of way of a variety of types eco villages, Buddhist communities, all kinds learning uh, homesteading and all kinds of off-grid skills. Or maybe given where a person's at, that's not really the thing. They, they want to work with a civic org or move to the part of the world that's going to be less affected by comparison. And so a lot of that is only going to be honed and well-developed from getting to know people, lots of people. And so that's what I'm going to focus on how to do effectively first and how you can effectively train an AI to do this with guardrails that doesn't you know, dip into erroneous precedences. So that it can eventually become an available tool because it's already the precedent's been set that people are using ChatGPT to try to ask it for wisdom. That's already happening. And so this, if nothing else, would by, by comparison, better food. You know, there's this game theoretic advantage to good food. When people are seeking and not finding the right shit, they're gonna keep looking until they get it. And obviously you're gonna wanna put people to better stuff. And so I'd wanna work on creating more um, I don't know, life coaches, uh, understanding that landscape, understanding communities and retreat centers and Dharma houses and monasteries of all kinds that are genuinely edifying to a person completely outside of the frame of religion. Really, I, you know, I'm kind of a metamodernist in that regard. 
Um, speaking of which, you know, I got this and I did technically get layered names. So my name's Twinley Lodra now, which is kind of cool. I'll probably only go by that name here at Maple, but uh, the contemplative practices is, and more less graspy, uh, clear ways of thinking have been quite wonderful. But the thing that's emerged the most is I want to work on tools that are genuinely edifying to people and scale wisdom in some degree. And this feels like one of the clearest ways to do it. In one way or another, if I have to truck drive for a year to save up money myself and build it myself, then I will. And so I'll share it here in this life update, but uh, feel free to email me. And if you know of anybody that would like to work on this, I'm going to do whatever I can to get this to organically emerge. And I'm not possessive of it. Uh, when I talk to Soryu or to, you know, Saxstein or whoever, I'm going to say, hey, what are the do's and don'ts about this? Are there any red flags? Can we red team this, yellow team it? Um, would be this group of people be the better people to develop it? I'll back off and hand it off to wiser people than I that can more effectively bring it about. I just think that this ought to exist and it clearly can. Again, you don't need a spiritual teacher to tell you how to tie your shoes and that it's important to meditate twice a day. And a lot of people are wandering around in the wasteland and they don't even have that. And so if you can make this broadly available to people to a minimum threshold of confidence, it seems inescapably worthwhile. So that's what I'm going to do. Thank you very much for watching. And I'm going to get back to the rigorous schedule that I'm on, which is sorry for the quick talking, but that's why, because I have five minutes before I got to get back. So um, reach out, email me. I think I've missed, I think I've gotten everything. Otherwise, I'm doing pretty good. I'm pretty happy. Contemplative practice is pretty nice. I've been doing the energetic breathing. This is a deep out breath. I've been focusing on a point and uh, clearing mind of attachments and it's been quite nice. So anyway, hope you're doing well. Much love to all whoever watches this, this and feel free to out anytime. I might eventually, if I get enough interest, start hosting regular Zooms to organize around this on say um, Emergent Commons or in other community groups for anybody interested in building something like this because I'm not going to be able to do it by myself probably. I will if I have to, but uh, I imagine I can't be the first person that's thought of doing something like this. I don't imagine that I'm, this is some brand new idea. I'm not reinventing the wheel here. And so I just want something like this to exist in a very useful, edifying sort of way, uh, however long it takes to, to build it. So thank you very much for watching and uh, take care and uh, talk to you later. I don't know what I'll do with my video. Maybe in a few weeks when I get home. Thanks.